let's go ahead and talk about storm formation. Wind is actually very important for storm formation because it's going to help start by moving large masses of air towards each other. Now, if these masses of air have different temperatures, we can actually get some pretty interesting effects. We're going to go ahead and simulate what is called a cold front, when cold air moves into an area with warm air. We're going to use water to go ahead and simulate the air, just because it's going to be a little bit easier to see. On this side, I'm going to go ahead and place my cold water, so let me do that now. Now, it may be a little hard to see, so we're going to make it very obvious that it's cold water, and we can do that with a little bit of blue food coloring. And let's go ahead and stir that in, so it's nice and clear and visible. Now while we have our cold air on this side, we're going to have our warm air on this side. And we're going to use some boiling water to simulate our warm air. Now I don't want this side to look blue too, because a little bit of cold water always sneaks underneath. So I'll use just a fair amount of red food coloring here to make the difference between our cold and our warm very, very obvious. Now I have a divider right here, and all I need to do is pull that divider out to allow my two air masses to mix. First though, let's have you guys come up with a hypothesis. What do you think is going to happen? Let's do this. Give it a minute. It does take some time for this experiment to fully work. Are we ready? Three, two, one, and let's watch. At this point, it looks like it's starting to settle out. So what did we notice? All of our hot water, which is indicated by the red food coloring, rose to the very top. This is normal for hot air. Hot air tends to rise and expand, moving upwards. The cold water on the bottom stays at the bottom. And again, this is normal for cold air. Cold air tends to sink and contract. When a cold air mass pushes into a warm air mass, it tends to force the warm air straight up. That warm air has water vapor in it. And as the water vapor rises with the warm air, it will eventually be cooled by the atmosphere. This cooling will cause the water vapor to turn from a gas back into a liquid and this leads to the clouds that we all see in our thunderstorm. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed our lesson on weather. Until next time, that was This Week in Homeschool.